Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Brandy here from Kit Guru, and in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a bit of a PC upgrade, and I thought it was a great opportunity to do a bit of an interesting video. So as you can see in front of me here, I have my dream graphics card. Uh, back in December, I did like a Christmas wishlist video, and this RTX 2080 Ti was on that wishlist video. I thought it was never going to be something that I'd ever get my hands on, because at the time, it was a pretty rare GPU in the UK. There wasn't really many samples available. Um, I couldn't really find it to buy anywhere. It was crazily expensive. But here I am. I've actually been sent a sample of this graphics card so that I can upgrade my PC. And I am so, so excited because it's such a beautiful card and I cannot wait to get it unboxed and get it inserted in my system. So a little bit of history on my own PC. I've got it here next to me. It's called Aurora. Uh, about a year ago, I actually built it in like a live stream style video, live on camera. I've got an i7-7700K as my CPU, and my current GPU is a GTX 1070 Ti. So jumping up to an RTX 2080 Ti is gonna be a pretty big improvement. I currently use a 4K monitor, so I also game in 4K. Uh, so in some games, you can imagine that my 1070 Ti does struggle slightly. I often don't actually get that sweet 60 FPS, even if I do turn the graphics settings down to kind of like medium and things. Uh, it, it does a pretty good job considering um because 4k is obviously way more demanding than playing games at 1080p um but it just doesn't have the full amount of power to game at 60 fps in that beautiful resolution so here i am with the RTX 2080 Ti. This graphics card is from KFA2. It's the same brand that makes my current GPU. I love them because they are white and um, the RTX 2080 Ti is actually the Hall of Fame edition, and I have owned a Hall of Fame graphics card before. Um, up on the wall kind of behind me here, I don't know if you've seen it in a few of my videos kind of hiding in the corner, is an old GTX 780, and that's a Hall of Fame card. It was my first Hall of Fame card. It's kind of like silver, but it has a white PCB, uh, and I've always loved white computer components, and I've kind of got, I've gone up the stages. I missed out on sort of the uh, 9 series. I didn't get a 980 or 980 Ti or anything, um, but I've kind of had one from each generation and I finally kind of peaked, peaked with the RTX 2080 Ti. Um, so I don't think I'm going to need a graphics uh, card upgrade for a while. So I've had my current graphics card for about a year. Um, I honestly would still be keeping it but it just happens that this graphics card was offered to me and of course I was not going to say no. Um, so I'm gonna take this current gra graphics card out and put this RTX 2080 Ti in. I've actually benchmarked my current PC in 3D Mark. I've also taken the power consumption as well in watts because I'm quite interested to see how much more power draw we're gonna see from this GPU. And I've also uh, done some gaming benchmarks as well. I've done Far Cry 5 and uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is the new one with ray tracing, uh, just because I thought that was kind of a good real world situation. They do have quite a nice kind of game benchmark to do as well. Uh, so it's quite easy to test those two games. Uh, so I've done that with my current system. Now it's time to unbox this graphics card. I'm so excited. I must admit I have had a bit of a sneak peek. It's not a live unboxing. Also, this isn't a brand new graphics card. As you can tell, the packaging is a little bit uh, kind of worn, but um, I have had a little sneak peek, but I'll be quite excited to sort of take it out properly and take a proper look at it. So you're taking a look at the box itself, the front of the box looks very similar to my 1070 Ti box. I think it honestly looks similar to my 78, 780 box as well. Um, it shows on the front here, it's got 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Uh, so that is like a huge amount really, I'm not sure I'll even use it. This graphics card also uses 8, 8 and 8 uh, pins so triple eight pin connectors from the power supply uh, that is going to be using a hell of a lot of juice the hall of fame series of graphics cards they are slightly more expensive so this graphics card is like 1400 pounds that's actually on a discount like overclockers at the moment because it was retailing for like 1600 pounds um but 1400 pounds uh, so that is obviously above the kind of base price that you can get a 2080 ti for but the hall of fame cards are the kfa2 
to do or also known as Galax as well I think if you're in the States they're kind of like special cards because you can push them a lot further when it comes to overclocking they're also kind of designed to be overclocked as well they're kind of like the Ferraris or the Lamborghinis of graphics cards. So yeah, basically this card is like the top of the end. It's a sports car, but it's like a super high-end sports car uh, because they are, they do have kind of like a custom PCB and stuff like that. So they can be pushed a lot further when it comes to overclocking. If you see people beating the kind of like 3D mark scores and stuff, it's because they're probably gonna be using one of these cards because you can push them that bit further. I think they're kind of like an extreme overclocking card. So it costs a lot of money. Um, I mainly like it because it's it's so pretty you'll see when I finally take it out of the box just how beautiful this card is uh, so on the front that is why it uses a lot of juice because it's going to need that juice if you're going to overclock it my current card uses an eight pin and a six pin connector so I'm definitely going to have to insert um, another cable into my power supply it is 750 watts I think it will handle it we'll find out if there's any flames uh, a PCIe 3 USB type C HDMI and three display ports it's also got RGB lighting and it's also got some 90 millimeter fans as well. So it's a triple uh, triple fan card. I think it is uh, two, two slots is what it takes up. Um, and on the back of the box, it's got a couple of pictures of what you actually get. So this, this GPU actually has like a little display on it, uh, which is quite cool. I mean, you are paying enough for it. So it gives you like a temperature readout, a fan readout, a voltage readout. You've also got kind of like the white back plate and it shows you like a picture of the actual graphics card. It's got the kind of uh, the custom PCB with the premium components. So it is made for like super, super, super overclockers. And it has a crown. I don't I think I'm going to use that. It looks a bit chavy. I don't know, or ghetto. I don't in the UK we call it chavy, but um, I don't know. Other countries it's kind of like a slang term for just like horrific looking. Uh, so it's like I've got a gold crown if you want to put that on it. And then they've also got their own overclocking software as well to go with the GPU, which I will try out. I'm definitely going to try overclock this card. Let's finally get it open, shall we? So the, the outside of the box is a bit battered because it has, uh, this card is like a sample. So it's been been opened several times before. So this isn't kind of like a fresh unboxing, but for me, it is kind of a fresh unboxing. You know what? I think I just opened it upside down. There we go. We've got the crown up. This box is really, really cool as well. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> It's such a cool box. You definitely feel maybe like you're getting your money's worth, although it is really expensive. So then we've got the graphics card. I'm gonna very carefully lift it out. This is like so much money. Here she is. That is humongous. That is so big. I'm trying to handle it like quite carefully because I don't I don't want to touch any of the uh, the parts that might get affected by my fingers. But yeah, you can see like the big, three big fans on the cooler. It's a pretty dense cooler. Um, I would, it's not technically triple slots, but it is gonna take up like triple slots because it's got such a hefty cooler on it and it's got that display. So that's gonna look really cool when it's lit up. I think it's got even got like RGB on the back here as well. So you've got like a little hall of fame Hall of Fame logo on the back plate, which I think looks really neat. And it's got a lot of gold detailing, silver, silver and gold detailing. It's got like a caution hot surface in gold. That cooler is beastie. That is so, oh God, I can't wait to get this in my PC. It's gonna look so awesome. I'm actually so excited. Okay, right, let's get this, get this lead down. I, it doesn't actually come in a static bag, which I'm surprised about. I don't know if that's kind of lost it on its travels, or whether it never had one. I'm so used to like when you get a graphics card out, it's, it's kind of protected in the stacks bag. So I'm gonna take out the rest of the stuff that we get it. It's like, is this a glove? It has gloves. Oh my goodness. I've sort of, I opened the box and peeked at the graphics card and stuff, but I haven't really like delved down into what else comes with it. It's got like, hall, these actually say Hall of Fame on them. I've got like, oh, me, do you reckon they're like anti-static? They must be surely, otherwise they're just gonna like wreck it completely if I try to touch it with it. I'm gonna do the rest of the unboxing wearing these like kind of creepy gloves. Okay, so we've got 
Uh, Molex connect to, to an 8 pin PCIe connector. I guess if your G, like PSU doesn't have enough 8 pin connectors for the GPU, but then should you really be spending that much money on a GPU if it doesn't, you don't have the right PSU? I want that many Molex connectors. That's just going to like start fire, surely. Oh, they're nicely braided though. Oh, you get three of them. You get three of those. We've got like another layer of foam to take out. More foam. Oh, I didn't know it came with this. This is the coolest USB that I've ever seen. It's like a mini version of the card. <laughs> and it's a USB dongle or USB drive, whatever you want to call it. Oh my God, that's so cool. It's 16 gigabytes if you're interested in what size it is. I don't know how fast it is. Can we overclock it? <laughs> Can we overclock the, the USB drive? That's so cool. It's literally a mini version of it. And then we have the one, the only <laughs> super chavy crown. Oh my God, that's so bad. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I cannot imagine that on this graphics card. It would look so weird. It would literally look so weird. Maybe if you had like a white and gold themed PC, it would look cool, but that on its own, just look, it just, that's definitely not my style. I'm not into that. Okay, we've got more foam. We've got some instructions. That's how to install the kind of gold chav crown, if you're into that. Um, it looks like you just slide off the LED display, slide in the crown, and then slide the LED display back on. So that's very simple and easy to do. I'm not gonna do it though, because I do not want my PC to look horrendous. Um, and then it's also got hoff stick. Hoff stick, what is that? Oh my God, I did not know it came with this. I did actually put this in like my Christmas wish list video, but I don't remember seeing this at the time. That is epic. I definitely have to install this. It's like a GPU support bracket, but from what I can tell, it has RGB in it. I'm so excited. This is gonna look so cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to get this installed. This is probably like, this is like one of the best days of this year or maybe even my life. Okay, place the support module in the appropriate position and tighten with the screws. Install the Hoff stick into the PC case right below the graphics card. Or should you install this after putting the GPU in? And connect the four pin cable of the Hoff stick to the graphics card to synchronize the RGB effect. So it's got, that's what that cable's for. I also imagine that's what provides it with power for the lights as well. Oh, and then you can like, Oh my god, it looks so cool. There is like a little picture on here. Sorry, I'm, I'm hogging the hogging the instructions. There's like a little picture on that that shows you like what it looks like together and it looks so cool. I cannot wait to get this installed. Okay, let's put that back in the box. Um, there's also screws as well. So that requires some screwing into place. Wow, that was awesome, wasn't it? I'm gonna use my weird Michael Jackson. Well, actually, I think Michael Jackson wore like a white glove, didn't he? But these are black gloves anyway. <laughs> Maybe white gloves would be more appropriate for this graphics card. But, wow, I'm so excited. Okay, that was the unboxing of this GPU. Uh, from what I can say, it is an extremely powerful graphics card. I will obviously um, put a lot of tech specs and things on the written. I do, uh, Kickeroo always does like a written page for all of the videos and things we do on our website. Uh, so make sure to go there if you want to see some like close up photos of the card and you want to see like the actual tech specs and stuff and also like a link on where to buy it. But that is like, it's so beautiful and I haven't even put it in my PC yet. So yeah, that's enough of me talking. I'm now gonna get the GPU installed into my PC. I'll do like a cool little montage so you don't have to watch me talk and talk forever. And then we can go over the sort of performance increase that I'm gonna see from this bad boy. And of course, check out the uh, RGB lighting effects and also see how well I could overclock it as well. I'm no overclocking pro, uh, but I wanna try and get the best out of this card because it is definitely made for overclocking. It even has like a little button on the back like the Hoff card that I had before, the 780, he pressed that and it puts all the fans to like full speed. Uh, so you can kind of like get the most out of it. I want to see what 3D Mark score I can get. I know I've only got an i7-7700K. It's still a good CPU, but I feel like this graphics card kind of like, 
I don't know, it definitely, it definitely doesn't match up so well. Those Ryzen 3 CPUs are looking pretty tasty at the moment, especially now I've got this card. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful, it's epic, it's more than what I expected it to be. Like, I can't believe I've actually got my hands on it. I'm like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. So yeah, let's, uh, enough of me talking and let's roll the montage. So here we have it, the RTX 2080 Ti is now in my Aurora PC system and in general I found the installation to be pretty straightforward, it was just a case of taking my old 1070 Ti out of the case, I had to ruin my cable management in the process which was slightly upsetting, uh, I then removed the cable combs from uh, the kind of like PCIe cables, uh, that was actually quite fiddly, it's probably one of the hardest parts <laughs> that was uh, when it came to swapping the GPU over was actually trying to get those cable combs off. They do come off but you do have to kind of pry them off. Uh, I then inserted the new graphics card, plug the uh, extra 8 pin connector into the power supply, plug them all into the GPU. That was all pretty straightforward and then I put the RGB light strip or RGB kind of support stick underneath the GPU and that wasn't too bad it was mostly fiddly and I made the mistake of first uh, actually removing the kind of PCIe covers at the back of my case I actually put them back in because when I kind of set it all up and I was kind of doing my benchmarking and stuff I looked at it and I was like that looks so weird like I've definitely should not have taken those out so all I did is I removed the 
thumb screws and then I use the screws that come with the light stick and then I kind of kept the PCIe slot kind of shrouds in place. And I think that looks a lot better now. So insulation was very, very easy. Um, and yeah, that, that wasn't too bad at all. My first impression when I turned my PC on was like, wow, because it looks so awesome. Like, it really fills my case up because I think with my 1070 Ti my case maybe looked a little bit on the empty side but this graphics card is so huge and with the PCIe cables that kind of stick out the end there as well I think it just looks incredible. Uh, it is a really really beautiful card and I think my PC looked all the better for having it in. Uh, as you can tell I probably didn't, I didn't try too hard with the cable management. Uh, I basically did not want to fiddle around with a load of cable combs. I wanted to get straight to benchmarking stuff so it's something I want to do in the future. I also want to switch my fans out to the white LL120s. That's another thing to do in the future because that's fiddly and my black ones work perfectly fine. So I kind of put it off because I hate cable management but now my cable management is kind of wrecked anyway. I suppose I should probably do the fans and sort the cable combs out and things all in one go. I just shot some cable ties around it, but it is such a beautiful card. Like it's got the RGB lighting. It's all controlled using the Hoff AI software. So you can change the color of the little display. You can change the color of the light stick. You can change the color of the kind of Hall of Fame logo on the back plate of the card. And there's also a little bit RGB underneath as well. There's an RGB crown. You can change all those individually. The display is really quite cool because it displays different information about the card. So at the moment, because my PC is just kind of sat on the login screen and the software's not open, it's not doing it uh, but you can see like the uh, core clock speed of the GPU you also see the memory clock speed you can also see the fan speed the BIOS version um, the driver version it all kind of scroll through on the screen and you can even add your own pictures to the screen and you just have to use like the bitmap format just kind of like a monochrome image in bitmap uh, and you can use one of those to display on the screen so you can put whatever you want on it you can also put text on as well uh, so that is really cool you have definitely got a bit of a customization but I think personally I just kind of went for a pale blue color with the white I think that looks really nice my PC used to be kind of more like white and purple but recently I've kind of gone for white and blue I quite like it's quite cooling in the summer I guess and um, but in general insulation easy and I think my PC now looks absolutely stunning like I mentioned earlier on in the video, I did do some kind of like benchmarks of my original build. So I did benchmarks on my 1070 Ti. Uh, and I, of course, have done exactly the same with the 2080 Ti. Uh, so I have got some performance and results and things to go over. In the video, I don't like to go into too much detail because I think it can get a bit kind of like boring looking at loads of graphs and me just talking and talking and talking about results. Uh, I think it works much better um, to kind of, if you want to read it in your own time, if you're like in interested in slightly more in depth so make sure to head over to the kickery website there will be a page on there that's got all of my graphs it's also got screenshots it's got a little bit of a write-up as well i've written a few sentences and things to go with the results um so that's quite interesting if you want to take a look at it in more detail and take a look at the screenshots and things um but i will go over the performance results so one of the first tests that I did was I tested how much uh, wattage the PC uses, so the power consumption. With my 1070 Ti, I saw a max kind of uh, wattage uses of 355 0.6 watts. Uh, so because this was such a huge jump, like a huge upgrade, I thought it'd be very interesting to see um, how much more power the 2080 Ti used. And I took a maximum reading while it was under load of 590 watts. Uh, so that is quite a large jump. So my seven, uh, I've got a Corsair RM750X power supply, so it uh, produces 750 watts, so that can definitely handle this GPU. Um, however, uh, we say that power supplies are probably most efficient between 50 and 60% load. Uh, so obviously at the moment, it's with my 1070 Ti, it was like bang on. Uh, at the moment, it's kind of under a bit of strain when my PC is under load. So as much as I do want to get on and upgrade my CPU, I think my next upgrade is probably going to be a thousand watt power supply uh, just because I want to feel more comfortable and make sure there is a decent amount of headroom uh, because this graphics card definitely does use a lot of juice. 
3D Mark is one of the benchmarks that I did with my uh, sort of system and graphics card and things. It is a really good benchmark for kind of comparing PC hardware. Uh, we use it at KitGuru for comparing laptops, comparing PC systems, and just comparing different graphics cards and things, because it gives you a nice number to take a look at, and also you can kind of use it to check the difference between your overclock and things. Uh, so I did four different benchmarks. Uh, it was like Fire Strike and Time Spy, and it was like Fire Strike Extreme, and no, Fire Strike Ultra and Time Spy Extreme, and then just normal Time Spy and just normal Fire Strike. So different resolutions, different kind of demanding tasks. I then took the graphics scores from those because I wanted to kind of take out my CPU. I just took a look at the graphics uh, graphic scores that the two graphics cards got, and then I basically compared them. And as you can see in this graph, the difference between the 1070 Ti and the 2080 Ti is huge. I expect it to be huge, uh, but it is massive. Like in the time spy kind of results, the score more than doubled. Uh, so I was smiling the whole way through. I was watching these numbers rolling in, and I was like, "This is going to be so good! Like I can't wait to kind of do like some gaming on this graphics card," uh, and it was. Just just brilliant really. I had I had a good time sort of seeing the comparison between the two results. The games that I chose to benchmark and kind of try out were Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Far Cry 5. Uh, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider is obviously a very new game that actually uses the ray tracing technology. Uh, Far Cry 5 is slightly older but both of them are really very demanding when it comes to it like playing them in 4k and I game in 4k so I of course tested them at 4k resolution. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider I saw like a huge like jump in performance over my 1070 Ti. Uh, the FPS like more than doubled um and kind of like all of the graphical settings so obviously I was extremely pleased about that. Uh, when it came to Far Cry 5 there wasn't quite so much of like a huge jump, there was still a significant increase but the scores didn't really like double as much. Um, it's probably because it's an older game so it's not quite as optimised to like the newer RTX cards as Shadow of the Tomb Raider is um, but the performance was still excellent. I don't think I'm ever going to see under 60 FPS at 4K again which puts a huge smile on my face because my 1070 Ti was really working hard Hard. I mean the games are still playable 30 fps 40 fps not too bad um, but the fact that I don't ever have to see under 60 now has made me very happy. So because these kind of uh, Galax Hall of Fame GPUs are specifically designed for overclocking it would basically be a huge crime not to try it out. So uh, with this graphics card it is specifically designed in the fact that it has like a custom PCB it's got improved VRMs it obviously has like the uh, three eight pin PCIe connectors as well so you can put a a lot more power through this card it can handle a lot more heat a lot more voltage etc uh, so it is definitely designed to get the best overclock possible it's already a 2080 ti so it's probably it's right at the top anyway but then once you put an overclock on it you're like you you're laughing really um so with the overclocking I press the hyperboost button on the back of the card so that sets all the fans to 100 percent and then I use the hall of fame i AI software. Uh, so I found software to actually be pretty good. It's pretty easy to use. Um, it's basically something it's everyone uses MSI Afterburner, but I did want to try using the their own Hall of Fame software because it's also what you use to kind of change the RGB lighting and change the display and stuff. Um, and yeah, it seemed to work really, really well. Uh, I set the power target to 150%. So uh, if you're aware of overclocking, you'll know that's quite a lot higher than what you can get with some 2080 Ti's. Like they might let you set it to 120. 130 um, because of this graphics card it can actually handle the extra power it lets you set it to 150 uh, so that is a lot of juice um but yeah that basically meant that with my uh, sort of overclocking i did a gpu clock of 2100 megahertz and a memory clock of 7750 megahertz or 15000 if you double it uh, so that was a pretty impressive overclock I was pretty happy with it uh, and it was really nice to see like the extra performance that I could get just from spending a little bit of time tweaking I had a smile on my face like the whole time I was doing it I was just going to kind of chuck a, a, a easy overclock on it and just get on and do the benchmarking things but this GPU like really gave me that proper bug of like oh I want to get the best score possible. <laughs> I got really really into it. I mean I didn't push it too hard because uh, kind of when I put more voltage into it that's without adding any extra voltage those kind of um, clock speeds. When I put like a little bit of extra voltage into it the car didn't really like it and because the GPU core clock 
kind of like boosted too high and then I started getting like artifacting and stuff so I just left the voltage at kind of like the lowest level um so I probably didn't push it maybe if I spent more time tweaking like the memory and stuff because I didn't spend too much time on the memory I just wanted to keep the GPU core clock kind of as high as possible um maybe I could have got a better score out of it but to me I find that overclock to be pretty impressive I was pretty pleased with it uh, I definitely I definitely uh have got the bug now I would say anyway this GPU's give me sort of real enthusiasm for it so with the 3d mark uh, benchmarks that I did you can see that I did get a decent increase in performance it's really exciting to see what you can get for free really you spend a bit of time in the settings and you've got hey look I've got like an even higher score uh, so that was really quite exciting I, I kind of get the feeling though that my CPU is probably holding this card back slightly and um, so even though my scores I was really happy with the improvement um overall i reckon they could definitely be a bit higher because i reckon that um my cpu is kind of holding it back I, once i've done a cpu upgrade um i think i'm definitely going to be back on 3d mark and i'm going to be like overclocking the cpu and the gpu and just like trying to get the best score possible because i definitely really enjoyed it like i didn't think i'd spend so much time overclocking and actually smiling uh so that so that was definitely really good so obviously uh with the overclock that i did that also boosted the performance that i get for, like I saw from my two games so with Far Cry 5 uh, I actually got over the 100 FPS mark which is quite exciting for a game in 4k and it's, it's a demanding game as well so a demanding game running at 4k and actually getting over 100 FPS I'm not going to be dropping like two grand on a 144 hertz monitor anytime soon uh, but I found it pretty exciting to get that FPS anyway when it came uh, to the kind of um, rise that sorry shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks I saw an increase in performance of about 10% uh, so when it comes to M FPS that is obviously quite a large increase because uh, I mean like 10% of like 60 fps like you you get in you get in your money's worth i'd say anyway or 10 percent of 80 fps like it is a pretty pr pretty decent kind of increase so i was definitely very happy with that and um, however one thing i did notice though is that when you do turn on ray tracing it does completely obliterate the performance um I personally don't like how DLSS looks, so I'd probably go actually would play the game on Ultra with ray tracing turned off um, and just not have ray tracing at all and just go to get a higher FPS that way because I think with ray tracing turned on and DLSS turned on, it just looks a bit rubbish. And then, but obviously, if you turn uh, ray tracing on without DLSS on, then uh, the performance falls through the floor and you can see because this graphics card without it on it got like really great FPS and then you turn it on and it's like you get like 30 to 40 it's still playable so if you want like the ultimate eye candy you can do it um, but I think it just shows like how demanding ray tracing is and even with the really high end GPU with a really good overclock on it, it you can't get like above 40 FPS really um, which is slightly disappointing um, but yeah, in general, I really loved playing around with this card. I loved overclocking it. I loved trying out games with it. I loved like doing the benchmarking and stuff. I think this GPU is really like, I don't know, I feel like really passionate about it because <laughs> it's, it's by far like the best GPU I've ever had. I've, I've never had, I had a 1070 Ti, but I've never had like the top of the range, if that makes sense, because I had like a 98 uh 780 sorry but that it wasn't a 780 ti and then i got like a 1070 ti but there's still a 1080 ti this is like the peak it's like the it's not a titan but you know you get the idea like i am so so happy to have it and it's just so exciting to have um so yeah, next next plan for my PC is to get a new uh, power supply because it's cutting it a bit close really. I'd like a little bit more headroom. I want it to run a bit more efficiently. And also I do want to upgrade my CPU because I think that i7, even though it's good, it's still a good CPU, especially for gaming with. Um, I do do like video editing and stuff. So I think uh, getting a new CPU would definitely improve uh, the kind of overall um, balance really because i reckon that 2080 i is probably being held back quite a bit uh so those ryzen cpus look really really tasty so maybe we'll do a ryzen video soon let's hope you know um you never you never know what the money situation is going to be like um but yeah that was yeah a fun video i hope you liked it that was me upgrading my pc um oh also i forgot to mention as well 
if spending like £1,400 on a graphics card isn't enough for you, there's actually an anniversary edition of this graphics card as well that Galax have done and it looks incredible. I think they announced it at um, Computex this year because it's like, I want to say I don't think it's going to be their 50th anniversary. It's got to be like their 10th anniversary. Maybe, I don't know. Probably their 10th anniversary. I, I really should have checked before um, I said that, actually. Anyway, they've got an anniversary edition of this GPU. It looks incredible. Um, but if 1,400 isn't enough money to spend, then I think that one's like 1,800 or something. I think you can actually pre-order it now as well. Um, but I think it's essentially the same card, just maybe it has like a different cooler. Um, but yeah, that, that looks even more crazy beautiful. I mean, I wish I could have one of them, but no way for that much money. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to see me do my CPU upgrade or if you hated this video, let us know as well. Like, give it a down vote. Constructive criticism though, constructive criticism. Um, so yeah, if you like this video from GitGroom, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, also leave a comment. We obviously like to hear from our readers. We also have a Discord you can join as well. Um, so make sure to join there. We like to sort of talk to a community and things. We also have a Patreon if you want to support kit guru uh, you can kind of support us uh, help us out kind of donate we do like giveaways and things as well to our patreons and you do have like your own section in the discord server as well um we also uh, thank you very much for watching the video and if you want to see more content from kit guru please make sure to hit that subscribe button and do press the little bell icon as well mm -hmm.